Good morning. I want to welcome all of you to Kamloops United Church today. It is just great to see you here on this beautiful summer day. A welcome to those of you who are watching us by live stream and later in the week on YouTube. It's just great to have everyone here today. We're doing something a little bit different today, and that is we are recreating a service that would have been held in an English country parish church in the 1920s. And we're doing this sort of in honor of Downton Abbey. So we're calling it our Downton Abbey Sunday. And for those of you who are here in person, 
There will be a tea afterwards with sandwiches and sweets uh, in the church hall. So we hope you'll stay for that. And uh, those of you who are watching online, you don't see, but we do have people who are dressed up today for the occasion. So uh, it's good to see you dressed up. I am wearing today uh, not what would have been uh, uh, worn in the, uh, the Anglican Church or the Church of England, but I am wearing what would have been worn uh, most likely by a Methodist or a Presbyterian uh, minister of the day. And uh, so uh, that's what, what I am wearing. Anyway, the service, just follow along. It's, it's very different. Uh, to the service that, uh, of course, we know. Um, you all have bulletins as well as stuff will be on the screen. Had you been in the parish church, you would have known this service by heart. And so you just would have recited everything. But uh, you'll have it on the screen. Um, just one announcement which I do wish to make. And, of course, our prayers, Rob, are with you. We are sorry for the loss of uh, Jane, your wife, and... Uh, our just hearts are, are with you at this time. And there will be a service of uh, prayers and music this coming Friday here in the church at 7 o'clock. So we will just be gathering just to remember Jane. Um, and the service will be also, uh, the reason it's at 7 o'clock in the evening is the service will be broadcast to Thailand where Jane's family are. And that will be 9 o'clock in the morning on uh, Saturday uh, in Thailand. So they will be joining us uh, for the service uh, in that way. Something that uh, they would not have done in those days, but we will do it because it is important for us to do, and that is the acknowledgement uh, of the land which we are on. And as we gather this morning, we do recognize that we are on the unceded lands of the Tecumlips to Shwetmuk, Unceded means that this land was never deeded over in, terror, in uh, treaty and that we are guests on this land. Reconciliation also means that we know that we all have work to do uh, in establishing relationship with those who were first in this land. And since 1996, this congregation has been a member of Affirm United, which means that uh, we are a place which is open and accepting of people in the LGBTQ2S plus community, means that regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity, you are welcome here this morning. So everyone is welcome. And we are going to begin our service this morning with an entrance hymn. And the hymn of entrance is... Uh, Rejoice the Lord is King, and we'll stand to sing this. Oh, uh -huh. 
we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him, through Jesus Christ, our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess the unworthiness of our lives, to pray as well as for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of his love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and not least to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us join together in silence and remember God's presence with us now. And now let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Let us pray together. Almighty Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, and that we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. Have mercy upon us, O God, after thy great goodness. Help us to overcome our faults and cleanse us from our sins. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Almighty and merciful God, grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, renewal of life, and the grace and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is good to sing praises unto God. Yea, a joyful and pleasant thing it is to be thankful. Let us serve the Lord with gladness. Draw near unto God, and he will draw near unto you. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and sh it shall be opened unto you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family of heaven and earth is named. Deliver us now from the vain things which have power over us. Enable us to rest our souls in thee and yield them to the guidance of thy loving spirit. Make us ready to offer thee the joy that is thy gift and worship thee with glad and thankful hearts. In the day of thy perfect perfection, Help us to see our shortcomings and be sorry for our own faults and grant, we beseech thee, that strengthened by our worship together, we may serve thee and our fellow men more faithfully in our daily life and come at last to thine eternal kingdom through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let the people praise thee, O Lord, Yea, let all the people praise thee. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And we're going to stand once again and sing Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. Serving thee, thy home. 
Let us join together to worship God and to thank him for all the benefits that we have received at his hand, especially for the blessings that we, in which we rejoice this day. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness in all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And let us now pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Would you please stand? <laughs> praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. All thy works praise thee, O Lord. O let our mouths be filled with thy praise. Please be seated. Our scripture reading today is from the Old Testament from Isaiah. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the waters they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. Thy Savior, I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore, I will give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thee seed from the east and gather thee from the west, 
I will say to the north, give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even every one that is called in my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have informed him, yea, I have made him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next reading is Psalm 29. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. He maketh them also to skip like a calf, Lebanon and Siron like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calve and discovereth the forests. And in his temple doth every one speak of his glory. The Lord sitteth upon the flood. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people, and the Lord will bless his people. Our next reading is from the New Testament, Acts chapter 8. Now when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, 
they sent down unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. This is the word of the Lord. Our last reading is from the Gospel of Luke. As the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts about John, whether he was the Christ or not. John answered, saying unto them all, Indeed, I baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand. He will thoroughly purge his floor and gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. Now when the people had all been baptized, it came to pass that Jesus, also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. And we will remain standing as we say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do we have the words of the Apostles' Creed, Sue? That's, perhaps we know the words of the Apostles' Creed. Shall we, we start and see, there we go. There we go. Okay, let us say the, the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to the heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the great men and men. We believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Please be seated. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children through Jesus Christ our Lord. And let us say together, Give peace in the world, O God, that the nations may dwell in unity. O God, who art the author and peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Teach us thy way, O Lord, 
and we will walk in thy truth. O Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to receive the prayers of thy people, which call upon thee, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Show thou us the way that we should walk in, for we lift up our souls unto thee. O God, set our hearts at liberty from the service of ourselves, and let it be our meat and drink to do thy will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise, when two or three are gathered in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and the petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Join with me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Downton Abbey is the hit British series, which is, I think, somewhere between a soap opera and a historical drama. The award-winning program follows the ups and the downs and the way downs of the aristocratic Crawley family, inhabitants of the titular estate and their mostly loyal team of servants. In six series, seasons, and a couple of movies, we have watched this family the series kicked off in 1912, in the hours following the sinking of the Titanic, an event that has a personal effect on the Crawley household. The estate's heir, Patrick Crawley, was one of the ship's fatalities. Historical events are ingeniously woven into the fabric of the plot as we follow the household through the First World War, various economic and social scandals, and now we have the latest movie just out that takes us into the 1930s. The cast is excellent, I think, but Downton Abbey's undoubted star is Violet Crawley, a.k.a. the Dowager Countess of Grantham. Actress Maggie Smith plays a surprisingly hip matriarch who steals every scene in which she appears with her deliciously biting one-liners. Playing on the strengths and the foibles of Edwardian England, the show dramatizes how everyone in society had their place, from the lowest servant to the lord of the manor himself, and everyone seemed to know his or her place. However, as the show progressed through the seasons, we began to see the challenges to this very structured society. As I have watched the series over the years, I have wondered what would it have been like to have lived in those times. And I have asked myself if I had been living then what would have been my role in society? And I've wondered, is it more difficult in our own times 
when we don't have such clearly defined roles in society. This morning, Doug read for us all four of the readings that are in the lectionary. We usually read only one on a regular Sunday here in the United Church, but today we are following what would have been the custom of a parish church in England in the 1920s. And there is a common theme to all four of these scripture lessons. The idea of people passing through waters, which later Christians identified as baptism. Baptism is the sacrament in the church where we very ceremoniously name the child when the minister asks quite often, what is this child to be named? We believe that at baptism, we are given an identity. We are given a role. We are given a place as Christians, as the parents promise to raise their child with the knowledge of the Christian faith. An interesting part of the ceremony is the comment by the minister quite often to the congregation, remember your baptism. Well, I find it strange because many of us in the United Church have been baptized as babies, and we don't remember the sign of the cross in water made on our forehead. Whether you, we have been baptized or not, what the minister is really saying is something like, remember your identity. Remember who you are. And so I wonder, how are we to remember? It's sometimes difficult in modern life amidst the conflicting claims and the confusion of names to remember who we are. I think that in modern life, we are forever answering to some false name, forever misunderstanding who we are and by whom we are named. It is easy to forget. That is why we are encouraged to remember who we are. We are told that the big question among youth today is, who am I? It's a pressing question, and I'm sure many of us experienced that in adolescence or as we moved into our early adulthood. The search for self, the quest for one's identity comes, consumes much of our teenage years. But I think it continues on through the rest of our lives. People who have recently retired tell me that they have to try and find a new identity for themselves. Today, there are innumerable causes, groups, philosophies, and cults that are willing to quite quickly tell us who we are. Just listen to some of those voices. Who am I? Well, the world of advertising tells us perhaps you are not quite beautiful enough, or you are lacking in this quality or that quality, or you are not slim enough, or you are mostly the maker and spender of money, a capitalist, a doer, a producer, an obtainer of stereos, cars with bucket seats and racing stripes, working to pay down your mortgage. That's what the advertisers tell us. Who am I? You are mostly a brain, rational thinking, reasoning being, absorbing facts and figures, going to school, endless school, living only to learn, but sadly not learning to live. It's not who you are, but what you know that is sadly what our education system can tell our children. If you just have enough education, quite often we are told you will succeed in life. Or who am I? You are the self-centered, autonomous, self-made being this modern scientific secular world would tell us. Nobody will look out for you but you. You are the most important project in your life. 
Nurture, care for, and love the adorable you. Look out for number one. Satisfy, soothe, make happy, care for your lonely you. As we go on in life, we realize that this question of who we are is not over and done with when we turn 21. I know people much later in life who are still asking the question as to who they are. They still experiment with their lives, mixing in this and that, hoping the whole thing will gel one day. They keep trying to change like Protus, the hero of Greek mythology, who would change his shape at any will. Many of us continue to change our shapes to suit the occasion, going through endless metamorphoses as the situation demands. To the pressing question, who am I? The church has traditionally responded, you are baptized. The way for us to find out who we are is not to embrace the latest fad, but rather to come and to look at the font, to gaze into the grace-filled waters. And what do you see? You will see a reflection of yourself. You will see you as you really are. And you recognize that you are made in the Creator's image. Who am I? You are someone to whom a name has been given. We are named at that font. In ancient times, the church actually named the child, often in memory of some beloved saint. In the early church, after a conversion experience, a person often changed their name to represent that they had an entirely new life. I believe that we are all called and we are all named by God. And life becomes a long process of trying that name on for size, growing up to it, answering to it, giving it meaning by the way in which we are living our lives. You know, I sometimes think that the names which we baptize our children with sound awfully big for that tiny little baby. But the child will grow into that name, filling it out until it feels natural. It fits. And you know, we couldn't imagine the person with any other name. In baptizing, the church makes a radically different statement about who we are than the world does. We are telling the baptized person that his or her identity is a gift given to them by the church bestowed upon them by grace. Many of us who have believed that identity is a personal discovery, a result of rooting around in the dark corners of our own egos, will be shocked to learn that our identity is given rather than earned. A Christian name is given. A Christian identity is given. And both have to be grown into until they fit well. Who am I? Baptism says, not only are we the ones to whom a name has been given, but also that we are royalty. Yes, we sin. Yes, we live less righteously than we should. But sin troubles us because we all know we are made for something better. Our sin troubles us because it doesn't fit who we are as people who carry the name Christian. It does not fit God's people. The Christian message is not that we should try to work hard to act like somebody. The Christian message is simply that we are somebody. Jesse Jackson, the American preacher and former presidential candidate, pastors today an inner-city congregation in Chicago. And he begins every service by shouting out, I was nobody, to which the congregation all shouts back, but now, thank God, I am somebody. Thank God, I am somebody. 
The great reformer Martin Luther, when he was struggling through the dark nights of his soul, when he was questioning his own faith, he would sometimes just touch his forehead and say to himself, Martin, be calm. Remember, you're baptized. Maybe some of us could try that when we get up tight. In our times of doubt and inner turmoil, hopelessness and confusion, we too would do well just to touch our foreheads where the cross, the sign, and the seal of baptism was made and remember our baptism. I want to tell you a story. In Alex Haley's book, Roots, there is a memorable scene the night the slave Kunta Kinte drove his master to a ball at a big plantation house. And I should remember, uh, mention, for those of you who haven't read Roots, it was the first book that really examined uh, the coming of slaves to the United States and, and what that was like for the uh, slaves living in the States. So Kunta Kinte drives his master to a ball at the big house. And as he's doing that, he hears music coming from inside the house. Music of the white folks dance. He parked the buggy and he settled down to wait out the long night of his master partying. Well, while he sat in the buggy, he heard other music coming from the slaves' quarters little cabins behind the big house. It was different music. It was music with a different rhythm. He felt his legs carry himself down the path to those cabins, and there he found a man playing African music, the music which he remembered hearing as a child in Africa, the music he'd almost forgotten. Kunta Kinta found out that the man was from the same region of Africa as he was. They talked excitedly in his native tongue of home and of things of home. That night, after returning from the dance, Kunta Kinta went home changed. He lay upon the dirt floor of his little cabin and he wept, weeping in sadness at what he had almost forgotten and weeping in joy that at last he'd remembered. The terrifying, degrading experience of slavery had almost obliterated the memory of who he was. But the music, the music had helped him remember. I think this is a baptism parable. How easy it is in the midst of this life to forget who you are and whose you are. So the church is here to remind you. We are here to remind one another that God has named us, that God seeks us out, and that God loves us with only one good reason in mind, and that is so that God might love us for all eternity. Each person in the entire household of Downton knew their place in the scheme of things. From the Lord to the scullery maid, the question of identity forms the backdrop of the entire series. It was important that each person knew their place. Today, that we are reminded we are a child of God, loved with a tremendous amount of grace and gifted beyond what we could ever imagine. And so I say to you once again today, remember your baptism and give thanks, for this is who you are. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is the hymn, Jerusalem. It might be familiar to many of you. Um, it was written in 1811. Uh, the words were written by the poet Blake, and uh, uh, if you're not familiar with him, I actually took a course on some of his works. Uh, he was a Christian mystic. Um, he was also a pioneer in social justice. Uh, one of the lines in the um, hymn talks about the satanic mills, 
and he was one of the first people in England to speak out about the evils of the Industrial Revolution, where the small cottage farmers were losing their land and their jobs to the big mills uh, in the cities and just the terrible, terrible uh, living conditions. So um, he wrote this poem uh, to talk about that. Um, it expresses a desire uh, to recreate the kingdom of God in this world. Uh, now, it's very English, uh, so um, it, it, it talks about creating that in England, so it's, it's, uh, um, uh, but uh, I, I, it's become, it's quite a popular uh, hymn uh, in England, even to this day. Those of you who have watched an English soccer match on television, often this song is sung at a soccer match, um, and there was about 20 years ago a discussion, uh, I guess, amongst the anti-royalists to replace God Save the Queen with this hymn as the national anthem. So I'm just giving you a little bit of background because the words maybe will seem a little strange, a little hard for us to sing, but it, it just gives us um, a, a glimpse into that era. Uh, the the uh, hymn, uh, the, the poem was put to music um, around 1920. Um, and so that's why we're singing it, because it is a good example of a hymn from the 1920s. Let us stand and sing Jerusalem. than a few of you knew that hymn. I want to uh, thank everyone who has assisted in uh, uh, this morning's worship service. I also uh, want to remind you, you are all invited to tea and sandwiches and goodies uh, in the church hall after uh, the service, and to say thank you very much to those who have set up this morning's tea and also to those of you who have brought food for it. So thank you very much. And we'll close with the way in which the service would have been closed. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all forevermore. Amen.